video blogger, you're supposed to put yourself on the picture more. I'm not keen on that idea, but anyway. Behind me is the Manx Menai Bridge. Slightly out of focus, but if you watch the video on Glen Helm number one, I'll tell you a bit more about why it's called the Menai Bridge and what happened when the army invaded it. We'll also take the right hand path up through Glen Helm to the trees, out towards an ass waterfall and we'll talk a bit about what happened to the Glen on its way up, a bit of history of it. So come and join me when you've got the time. Another sad reminder of the TT how many casuals it takes. But when I was looking in the high museum, it's an awful lot of people hurt at Glen Helm, 20s and 30s. That's the view you'd normally see from the road. Running up to very big. And when I came out this afternoon, I was listening to a broadcast on my radio with Dougie Allen, one of the broadcasters, and he was talking about Glen Helm. He was talking about this bridge which was rebuilt by the army. And he said they gave them the timbers and the metals and they built it as part of the manoeuvres when they came over for training, I suppose. And they've actually built the bridge apparently on a miniature scale of the Menai Bridge. So we'll have a look at that and we'll go back home, get some pictures out, combine the two. Show us the other side of the Menai Bridge, I imagine must have had some sort of rope to um, hold the bridge up. And this one they're using pillars. I imagine this would be in the ten holes. The suspension part. Now to get a good view of the Menai Bridge. Not having a risk that much in the valleys today. This is the River Neb. Even Van Helen on his way down the lower bank. To the other side, the Menai Bridge. Plus, you would use this to get up to the very big plantation. The falls drop down from Mary Beg or Mary Veg Plantation, which is a river we're going to have to look at probably later in the year. It's got a great little playground, to which my kids here be 40 years ago. I used to come here before that. In fact, I've done some discos in the uh, Glen Helen Hotel. Some of the nights they were a few years ago. 50 years ago, anyway. I've seen a few reports that say in the Glen has uh, been spoilt now by these fancy paths. It's too easy to do when there's all the rest of it. And I think it's wonderful. It's not all got two legs or a full health. I sort of do like to explore these places. I mean, this is a long glen, there are nice falls about a mile away. And um, it's something through mud, I think they've done a really good job of it. Nature will always find a way where to grow. Look at that. Growing out of the wall. It's fell down but still growing. Come here Penny, let's make a wish. Come here. Come on, Penny. Here. Up. Turn up Penny. Come on. That's a good girl. Now this is the famous uh, Glen Helen Wishing Stone. And um, it's supposed to have supernatural powers. Well I could do with some of those I think. It used to be up at the Renas Falls apparently, but they repositioned it down here. I guess just to um, get more visitors, you probably have to pay a few pence to sit here and have a wish. So we'll have a wish. See, we're on the right hand path. If you're facing it, it's my favourite path. My favourite part of it anyway. And uh, I'm not sure how far we'll get. The light is fading a bit. I said when our falls are about hmm, three quarters of a mile from here. So I imagine what happens then from the Renas down with the changes is now to the Neb. Water's gushing everywhere today. There's no getting away from it.
I mean, the Foxy board must be commended. They've done a really good job of it. It's a bit colourless this time of year. The trouble is, when the leaves come out it gets really dark, so what do you do? I'm not sure how much of this walk we're leaving. That's what you might think of it really. I shall keep it, you may not see it. Let's talk a bit more about the history of the Glen when we get a bit further up. Used to be I believe a quarry up there at one time. A carding mill which would be used for uh, processing wool, I guess. Seems to come down everywhere. I just love it. Hope you do too. Exotic ferns still abound. This path is how I remember it. So it must be to the other side that they've done a lot of work on. So this one is more or less as I remembered. It's 10 years since I was here. Disgraceful, isn't it? Amongst me. It's quite interesting when I was here, I was taking lots of pictures, which I'll stick with this video when I go home. That was 10 years ago, and uh, it was summertime rather than wintertime. And I had this new Canon camera, which I thought the world of. So I was crossing the river, as you do, and um, slipped, fell on me backside on the river, flat down. And all I could think about was not me, it's the camera, because I paid so much money for it. So I'm lying in the river, with my hand up in the air, the camera out of the water. And somebody up to see me and said, uh, that was a lucky little shot. I had to agree. Uh, what do you think folks? Shall we stop? Shall we go on Penny? Oh let's be let's be daring. We finally get home, we have a warning. Not a little dangerously. worries me, I get a halfway along this path I don't get any further then we do have to go back briars across it you can fall down before you know it your ankle's gone and you get people saying you've been wasting safety people's time That's what I thought. That looks like the end of it. Well, as you may have guessed, that was a dead end down there and some seat placed for the um, welcome individual to have a bit of a rest. It's just a little bit of history about the place. Originally, this claim was owned by a guy called Marsden. And he was sort of the instigator of laying it out, really, in the late 1840s, early 1850s. It's rumoured that the Glen was named after one of his four daughters. And he planted a million trees. Um, unfortunately, truth states he never had a daughter called Helen. And if he planted a million trees in here, it'd have to be one every six inches. So, obviously that didn't work out. And, um... 
the real meaning of the name is probably something more fancy like a Latin name for prettiness or whatever because the Glen is a truly gorgeous place to walk and this forestry board track is fabulous so far anyway and we'll carry on a little bit further see what else is on offer now this path is a bit muddy definitely need you well to up here this is one I have never been on still hear the water roar in the background I like how these glens are. It doesn't matter how wet or windy it is out there. You're always assured of a welcome and a respite from the weather. Have I got another view for a change? Another than the money path. Even on a dull day. Oh, speech leaves make such a lovely colour, don't they? Now, what else can I tell you about this? Place? Oh, yes. And Mr. Kane bought this pub, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. And <laughs> 1938, I think. And a bit controversy, really. Be widowed a few years. And he had the pub in Peel, what was called the Peel Castle or something similar. Don't quote me. And uh, he went to the auction up here on a whim and uh, stuck his hand up at 10 grand. Now, having 10 grand, put out a bit towards it, hoping he'd borrow the rest. Fortunately, after he died, leaving a massive mess for his sister, brother, or sort of. But one of the funniest things in the contention of the will was that he must have liked his cars, Mr. Kane, because he seemed to have a few other years. Anyway, he bought a new car, or a car, from TC Frost, I believe it was, in Castle Street and Peel. Ordered it, and uh, he told him the invoice rang to his sister or the bill and she would pay it and his idea was he'd give her shares in the company of course he'd died before that so the ownership of the car became a big court case and uh, being a car salesman that was more interesting in what sort of car it was rather than the case and I did all that searching and I got the information from now I'm using it was a Vauxhall 14 horsepower. So looking on the web for that age of car, it's about 240 quid to cost them. Today it was 18 grand, so it's a lot of money to fork out. The 14 horsepower, I suppose, must be in the engine size. So I'll stick a picture on the site, you can see what it was he bought. I'm quite satisfied about that. It's not funny the small things give you the most back. That's a little bit more of it. I'm not going to tell you chronologically because it sounds like a lecture. It's just the bits I uh, remembered, really. Well, I'll be going now on my YouTube channel. I suppose since a month. And 30 odd subscribers later. And a thousand odd views. It's a bit chuffed, really. I've really enjoyed doing it. And, uh, Despite a lot of suggestions from a few people, I'm still going to continue to do it. So, hopefully try and get all the glens done in the Iron Man sometime. That's my plan. I think there's 18 of them. This is a probably one of the biggest, but I think they do is the biggest. That is a full day one, that one. There's lots to see now. I'll definitely have a go at it.